CPU. Yeah, look at that, look at that. It's all installed in the RGB build, which was December's PC of the month, no less. It fits just super well in this system, of course, because it's already got a Hue Plus in there with some air fans, etc. Oh yeah, it looks good. Mounting this sucker was pretty straightforward. Um, it probably would have been a little easier had I been mounting it outside of the chassis with just a motherboard, but since I had, you know, some other components in the way, it took a little bit longer. But for the most part, very simple and straightforward instructions, easy mounting solution. Uh, I really like the fact that after you've, you're done installing the mounting bracket, at least for LGA 1151, you only need two screws to bolt down on the cooler itself. You can see one of them right there. Now, if you guys remember this build, it's rocking a Skylake Core i5 6600K, overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz at 1.4-ish volts thereabouts. And uh, actually this cooler had no problems handling it. We did GTA 5 for about 15 minutes or so as per usual, and we didn't see temps go over 69 actually. Um, so we were pretty much hovering in the 50s 90% of the time with occasional peaks into the 60s. Uh, ambient in my room during my test was 60, no, I'm sorry, wow, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. And uh, overall some really nice temperatures here from the Quad Lumi, so very excited about that. Again, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, $60 US, so there is a price premium, about $15, $20 over the original H7, but in my opinion, worth every penny. But we still have more to talk about here. Um, for starters, let's talk about the fan. Um, while it was doing that excellent job of cooling our 6600K, the fan stayed relatively quiet. I couldn't honestly hear it over the other case fans in, in the chassis, um, and it didn't seem to ramp up or down too aggressively, so that was nice. Again, I wish it was RGB just because at this point in the game, 2017, if you have a device that has one RGB LED on it, all of the LEDs should be RGB. I think that's just sort of standard these days. So maybe for a 2.0 model of the Quad Lumi, we could see that happen. Uh, but overall looks very nice indeed. The LEDs, the RGB LEDs on this cooler, however, are fantastic. Super high quality. They look just on par with the, uh, the LED strips of the Hue Plus. I might add in, in terms of just the color vibrancy and brightness. Um, I really like the underglow lighting here more than I thought I would simply because it sort of illuminates the just all around your, your CPU socket. And it kind of creates like just a, a nice glow of the background of your chassis, which usually doesn't get much attention. Um, and it sort of just creates like a nice perspective of depth in your chassis. It gives you a bit more spatial presence, if that makes sense. So it looks really nice. Uh, the CryRig logo, of course, looks awesome too. Now I can see why they uh, went with the long, longer, like spelled out CryoRig instead of just the, the shorter logo, because it, it gives you more LED action. So that's fun. Now I must confess, there was a not so great experience with this cooler uh, in regards to the faceplate here. It's a plastic faceplate that just attaches to the heatsink via four small plastic tabs. They're really tiny little plastic latches that actually insert into a couple holes in the heatsink itself. And two of those latches broke off in the midst of me trying to mount this cooler to the motherboard with what I would not consider any sort of excessive force. And the thing here is, I don't know if this is a final retail version. I got this straight from CryoRig at their Computex booth long before the launch. So I don't know if, if they're gonna be using the same sort of design and same, same plastic tabs, but in the event that they are and you buy one of these, just be very careful with this faceplate. Don't try to remove it and replace it if you don't need to. And if, if you do, just be very careful because they can be sensitive and do have a tendency, at least with this model, to snap off. You can see right here, I've actually used, resorted to using a piece of duct tape to hold this plate in position because without it, the remaining two plastic latches on the bottom aren't enough to hold this, this cooler in place in its current orientation. It'll just sort of drawbridge down and fall off altogether, which is obviously not 
not very ideal. So something to be aware of. It's kind of unfortunate that that's the case, but I feel like me addressing this and, and bringing it to your attention uh, is going to help you guys avoid any sort of uh, issue or damage with this front plate should you be purchasing one of these in the future. So there you have it. Now, one thing I almost forgot to mention about this cooler is that while it does a great job of keeping thermals in check, it doesn't necessarily take up a ton of room to do so. So what you have here is excellent RAM compatibility. And you can see we've already got some Trident Z RGB modules in here from G-Skill, sitting pretty with tons of clearance to spare. And I feel like even in a mini ITX chassis or a mini ITX board, you'd have just tons of clearance um, in most scenarios. And with a relatively modest height of around 145 millimeters, uh, it can also fit in a wide variety of cases, just height wise, there's a lot of clearance there. Even in some mini ITX towers, uh, this should be able to fit just fine if that's the direction that you're headed for your next build. Now, I guess the last thing to talk about here is the cooler's integration with the NZXT cam software and how that all works out. So first off, I think it's great. I think it's great that uh, you can control this within cam and you don't have to have a separate software. I already mentioned this, you can do uh, con independent controls between the, uh, the logo and the underglow. Um, and you can also synchronize uh, your, your quad Lumi to the other uh, cam supported devices, such as your air fans, your LED strips. And this more or less works. Uh, for example, it worked beautifully with the uh, sort of rainbow spectrum that we have worked out right now. However, there are a couple effects that don't sync up quite as nicely between all the various components. For example, like pulsing and breathing um, is way faster on the quad Lumi than it is on the air fans or the LED strips. Even when you enable sync mode, the, 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 the speed interval is just way off for those various effects, which is gonna bother some and others not at all. So it's just a personal preference. It kind of gets under my skin a little bit. And when I click sync, I expect everything to be in perfect unison, but you know, that's just me. Some to be aware of though. Uh, and then uh, the other thing is that you can do some other cool things with uh, with the, uh, the LEDs here on the cooler, very much like you can with the other Hue Plus devices we've seen in the past. For example, you can um, uh, have the colors change based on CPU temperature or frame rates. Uh, I think CPU temperature makes a bit more sense, IMO, uh, so you can have it go from like, you know, blue to, to purple to red as the uh, heat, as the temperature on your CPU increases gradually. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it still doesn't smoothly transition from color to color. That would be nice. We're still getting that sort of just jump around effect, jumping from one color to another abruptly. Um, hopefully in the future that they can smoothen that out as well. That might look a little nicer, but I think those are all the things, ladies and gentlemen, holy crap. I'm so glad I finally got to take a look at this cooler. I feel like all of the hype surrounding it has now been validated in my eyes, now having worked with it for a bit. And not only does it look great, obviously, but it's a fantastic performer as well. As long as you're not trying to hit some record-breaking overclocks, it's gonna be great for any overclocked um, gaming chip, under load, et cetera. Uh, it really is uh, a, a solid component. And it doesn't necessarily replace the original H7. I feel like the H7 still has its own place because it is, again, 15 to 20 bucks cheaper than this sucker here. So if you're just trying to save some dough and you don't really care about that added bling factor with the RGB lighting, then just go with the original H7. It's still a great price performance unit. But um, that being said, Definitely consider this guy if you're trying to get that extra electricity in, into your system and you want to go the air cooling route. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Let me know what you think of this cooler in the description below. Also, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Before you guys go, also feel free to check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck fifty a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can back out anytime you want. It's totally worth that. As always, I'm Kyle Bitwit. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see y'all in the next video.